Hello everyone, welcome back to Blossom School House. If you're new, I just share everything there is to know about our homeschool life, what we get up to, the curriculum we're using. And speaking of curriculum, today's video is going to be a look at what we have chosen to use for history, science and geography next year. I have also got in this box the curriculum we picked for math but I'm sceptical about sharing it purely because I have seen that The Good and the Beautiful have released a new math curriculum that I'm very interested in. Um, we used them before and everything that we didn't like, they've changed. So I'm going to show you what we have got. Uh, I'm just going to show you it all. And then <laughs> somewhere down the line before we start next year, um, I may have a new video with a new math curriculum. So anyway, moving on to what we are using next year for definite. I have already shared a video on what we're using for language arts and you can find that. I'll put the link for it in the description. Um, so I have already shared the language arts, but Everything that comes in the packs, I'm going to share today that's in these boxes here as well. So you'll still see what we're using for language arts as well if you haven't watched that video. So the first thing we have is our science curriculum. So we've gone with Heaven and Earth for Beginners. And this is by Masterbooks under the God's Design curriculum. So you may have already seen we've been using the Masterbooks God's Design Science this year which covers human body, plants and animals and we've really really enjoyed it. We're still in the human body which is our third and final unit for that book and we're going to be working our way through that. Hopefully we'll finish by the end of this year but if not we'll probably work on it a little bit over summer and then start this one once we've finished. We really enjoy the layout of these lessons. Well, there's always an activity, a suggested experiment that you can do that's usually really simple as well and easy. Um, this covers weather, water, the earth, space, the moon, planets, everything. So everything on earth and in the sky and universe. Okay, next in here, we've got language arts. As I mentioned earlier, I have done a full video on the good and the beautiful language arts level two and level K. Uh, so you can find that video if you want to see more inside and why we are really excited to be using the Good and the Beautiful again for language arts. And I'm also just going to share what we've got with that set. So we've got the course book and then there's two readers, a shared reader for her to read with me and then a personal reader, which is quite a lot bigger actually. So I think the lesson will tell her to spend a certain amount of time reading in her personal reader and then at various times she'll be directed to have a read with the shared reader with me so I'm guessing we'll share the reading portion in this reader too and then I grabbed the full set of the phonics cards because both the level K course and the level 2 call for these cards so I just purchased them with the level 1 and I'll use them with both children and then I actually grabbed these flashcard spelling rules as well and I think they're wipe clean as well and it tells you the 13 most consistent and important spelling rules and it just means that they can practice them so these are featured throughout the course these spelling rules so this is just an extra for practicing so we've got the language arts for Miss 5 in here as well the level K of the language arts from the good and the beautiful So, so excited to be using them again. And like I said, we'll be using the phonics cards from the course cool set level two that I got because they are the same phonics cards for all the levels. And then she has a reader two, which is the level K reader. And I believe she'll be directed when to read out of here in her lessons as well. Last thing that I got with the level K language arts are the kindergarten mini books. So it says that each single sheet makes one mini book. Cut the sheet in half on the red dashed line and then fold them in half. So I am just literally going to be making little mini readers for her as well. I'm not sure how or when they're incorporated into the lessons, but I will do a do a lesson with me video on both the language arts courses when we start them. So I'm sure we'll figure that bit out as well. 
pairing with the language arts from the good and the beautiful are also the handwriting books so they we have been using the good and the beautiful for handwriting for a long time um for years now and the kids have moved both of them quite quickly through the levels so although they are on level k and level two on the language arts miss five will be going on to the level three with the handwriting and Miss Seven will be going on to the level four. And that is purely because she is doing the level three right now. She's only halfway through, but they do it most days. And so I thought I'd get, grab these for when they finish so that I don't have to worry about ordering it again. They really enjoy the handwriting, the coloring in. Level three is the beginning of cursive. So Miss Five, who will be six, will be introduced to cursive. And if it's too much of her, I would just go ahead and go back to the level two. I've got the PDF version. I'll just re-download it and print it off again. But I think she'll be fine. And Miss Seven's really enjoying the cursive. And this is a step up. There's a lot more sentence copying. So still continuing with the cursive. Beautiful colouring in pictures and copying images and mazes and games. So sticking with the Good and the Beautiful for our handwriting. The last thing I got from the Good and the Beautiful was this beautiful draw vintage images step-by-step -step guide i got the level one and the thing i love is that actually it can just be reused over and over so you just set this up on a stand we've got a wooden book stand and they can just take a piece of paper and independently sit and draw each step by step and learn to draw these really cute and simple things so I'm really happy with this one. I'm looking forward to the girls trying this. The next thing that I've got in here is history. So we've been using for history the Collins Primary History Books. So this is the teacher's guide. We started with changes within living memory and then we moved on to events beyond living memory and we've just been working our way through the Significant Individuals book. Um, don't recommend the teacher's guide. I haven't needed it and haven't used it. So if you are interested in this, I mean, there are a couple of copy masters, but not a great deal. Um, I mean, there is a ton of information in there, but just for us personally, we haven't felt like we've needed this. Considering the price is about £25, you can definitely get on without it. And it just works in simple units, um, broken down into two or three lessons that you can expand. Um, or just read through them all in one day. We've done both of those things. We just recently did Henry VIII, and it gives you a nice background on Henry VIII. There's these great portrait pictures in here. These are really helpful. They're featured throughout the curriculum. It just explains some of the words that children might not know. And then at the end, it just prompts you to have a think and to do an activity. And then it moves on to the next unit. So these have been great. The fourth book in this series is Stone Age to Iron Age. So I have had that in my Amazon basket for a while, but I was not 100% sure if we was gonna be continuing with these. I am gonna buy that, that fourth book and we are gonna still pluck out different lessons from there. But as Christians, I did feel that we were lacking history from a Christian point of view. So I looked into the mystery of history I bought this from christianbook.com and I did have to pay shipping once again. Everything good is in America. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so I'm really excited about this one. This is the Mystery of History Volume 1, Creation to the Resurrection. Now this is not just Bible history, this is world history, but from a biblical perspective. It's broken down into weeks. So week one is Creation, Adam and Eve, and then Jubal and Tubal Cain. And then we've got Noah and the Flood, the Ice Age, and then dinosaurs. There is Stonehenge, early Egypt. So I'm really looking forward to starting this one. And I think there's a code in here somewhere as well that when I type it in, I can get a whole activity pack and printables to, to pair alongside the book. I'm probably going to do a bit of a mix. So one lesson, maybe two out of here a week. One lesson from the Stone Age to Iron Age. A week as well so I'm going to see how that goes and I will let you know of course and then to pair with that I've got the student bible atlas so I've never seen one of these before so I was quite excited actually to see that they have a bible atlas 
For geography, we've been using the Collins Primary Geography as well. We do like the Collins Primary. Um, we started with the world around us. Um, we got the pupil book, which is where you basically teach from. And the teacher's guide. And the teacher's guide was really handy because the lessons in the pupil book were very short and sweet. So having the copy master's activities to do with each lesson was really handy. Then we moved on to pupil book three because World Around Us is one and two. So again, I got the teacher's guide, which is twice the price of the pupil book. But I thought, why not have all those handy copy masters as well? But the lessons are definitely more in depth in this pupil book three. There's map work to do. There's investigations to do. There's basically what I found best was to buy the kids a journal. So I've got them a geography notebook each where they have just filled in whatever it's asked them to do. So we've done lakes and house plans and, and waterfalls and things like that and water. So they've been putting those in their notebooks and to be honest, fitting in the worksheets as well as the lesson hasn't been as easy. So we are sticking with Collins Primary for Geography and I've gone ahead and bought the pupil book four, which is movement, but I didn't get the teacher's guide because the lessons are more in depth again and there is lots to fill in in their notebooks and I just didn't feel that we were going to need the copy masters as much. We have been using the Collins Atlas for age four plus, so I went and grabbed the seven plus Atlas as well because Miss Seven will be turning eight and I think she's ready for more in-depth detailed maps. So I'm really looking forward to using this alongside the lessons as well. Okay, so you've seen geography, history and science and our language arts and the last thing I have to share is math. And I've gone back and forth about whether or not to even share this because I am still undecided, but I did purchase math curriculum for next year. We have been using masterbooks and Miss Five is just finishing level one. So I got level two for her and Miss Seven actually was using level two and we had to pause midway. We got halfway through and I had to pause. She was really struggling with the concept that it was trying to teach. And so we stripped back and we got out the manipulatives and I've been using some cheap UK math workbooks that have just got the currency and things like that. And so we were gonna pick back up with level two and then I had level three ready for when she had finished the level two. But now I'm not sure if we're definitely going to use master books for math next year. As I said, I've seen the Good and the Beautiful's new release and it just looks so inviting. And at the moment, math hasn't been fun for Miss Seven and I want math to be fun. I want her to see that God designed numbers and patterns and that everything, math is in everything and it is everywhere. And I want her to know that and to enjoy it. So that is why I'm very tempted by the Good and the Beautiful because I know that that is what they incorporate into their math. Miss Five is just finishing the level one, so this was for her, the level two. Um, she's a little bit ahead um, with her maths. She's doing really well, she's enjoying it. But same thing really, um, this is great. It's a really great math and it's not overwhelming. It's nice and gentle and simple, but still covers all the core uh, subjects of math. But, I mean, the good and the beautiful is just so colorful and it's fun and there's activities and, They've got a whole new manipulatives box and I'm just very tempted by it. So stay tuned because I may have a new video coming up for you soon with the good and the beautiful math. So that is everything, I think. <laughs> we'll see with math. But that is everything that we are using next year. Um, this is all the curriculum. Of course, we will have um, other resources and books, but this is the core curriculum for both children for next year. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions or want to see any more, then just let me know in the comments and I will share and respond as much as I can. We start school in September and it will be our fifth year of homeschool. So can't quite believe where that time has gone, but really, really enjoying the journey.